Естебан Мендес подпомага продажбите на Луканет в Европа и ръководи процесите по имплементация в Обединеното кралство и Испания. Фокусът му е върху редуциране сложността на финансовата консолидация чрез пълното оползотворяване възможностите на Луканет. Упростяване процесите по събиране и валидация на цялостната входяща и изходяща информация, консолидацията, планирането и финансовото представене на организациите. Той ще направи демонстрация на решението за финансово управление Луканет. As the voiceover was saying, we are a solution for, for consolidation, budgeting, reporting, and analysis. And I did have some, I have actually only one slide that shows our software architecture, and then I'll jump right into the software. What makes us different is that we have these different phases where the data flows, so we will extract data from your ERP or accounting system. We have connectors already tested to over 200 ERPs and accounting systems from the most popular in the world. And the moment we have a new one, we can virtually develop a connector to any new ERP in a matter of days. So uh, the look at an importer will allow you to extract and map data with a couple of mouse clicks. Uh, we are a software that, is, that always intends that you are independent from IT and from your consultant as well and that you don't require any type of technical knowledge to administer the software. So every time, and you will see it in the demo, every time you do something, it's with, with mouse clicks. The data will flow to a financial data warehouse, which is a, a relational layer with a full transactional detail from your ERP. And that's there in case you need to drill down from, from top, from the report, down to the transaction line or the invoice. Uh, but then we load only the total balances to our, to our OLAP server. This makes performance very fast, very snappy, because this is in memory. It's, it's one of the technologies I was discussing earlier, actually. And then you view your reports in our client or with our Excel add-in. We have full integration with Microsoft Excel for report crea creation and analysis. We also connect to Click, to Power BI, to any any other BI tool for dashboarding or presentation analysis of already consolidated data. Another thing that, that makes us, so basically this part, the full transactional detail is, we are the only ones in the market that, that to this day that is able to have such level of detail for, for drill down. The second differentiator is this module right here, looking at group report. It's our module for data collection and validation. So we help, we help you have clean data right, right from the source. So if you have large teams and you're wasting time um, doing intercompany reconciliations with emails back and forth, questions back and forth, you can push this part of the process down to your data collectors so that they discuss intercompany imbalances amongst themselves in a pre-submission phase. So I will show you that as, as well in a, in a moment. And this is optional, of course. Okay, so this is my landing page, my start page where you, I, I can add free text. And on the left, you see the overview of the menus with different sections. Just, I'm just going to quickly start with our task section, where we'll typically create a monthly close protocol, a workflow so that you and your users have documented every part of the consolidation process or of the budgeting process. So for example, I have everything here step by step, and if I want to create a new task, I can very easily add it and assign an owner for the task. So for example, let, let's say that this person is responsible for creating the data imports for company X and I am going to supervise that myself. Or we can set another, another supervisor. Right, so just with a mouse click, I've got a new task. I, can, I am also able to, to select um, a deadline. And overall, I have an overview of my entire project of closing the month. 
And even from, from the task itself, the user has instructions on how to perform the task with screenshots. So the user does not need to be an expert in navigation within the software to fulfill his task. Uh, if you have a smaller team, you may not use this for task management, but just for self-help. Then the next section, reporting and analyzing. Here's where you will have out of the box all of your financial reports, your P&Ls. Out of the box, you, you, you will have uh, Bulgarian Gap and IFRS and uh, for P&L and balance sheet and also a cash flow statement. So let me just expand a bit so you can see. So we've got movement schedules as well. And all of these reports, I, I will show them to you in a moment, are interconnected. So that means that when you load and adjust data in your primary P&L and balance sheet, let's say, for example, your primary balance sheet and P&L are Bulgarian Gap. You load data there, you adjust, you eliminate, you consolidate, and the other IFRS or management P&Ls are in parallel, automatically updated. There are mappings within the software that update all of the reports at the same time. In terms of the analysis, <coughs> I've got an example here of the PNL for 2017. And I can also click and view by different periods or by month. And the structure can be changed without any type of coding or without calling my consultant. If at any point in time I have the needed user permissions for administrator, I can very easily change my reporting structure. So let's say, for example, here I've got two GL codes for travel expenses under general and admin expenses. Uh, I want to regroup them to a line item travel expenses. So I can very easily, with a mouse click, create my new line item. It'll pop up here. And then I can move these two codes by cutting them and pasting them. So now I've got, now the way I report is different. Travel expenses has its own line. So in a few seconds, with two clicks, I've, got, I've changed my uh, re reporting structure. For analysis, we also have the ability to use graphs, some simple graphs here, to graph different costs. So on the graph, I can see that clearly I've got a, a spike there in October for marketing expenses. So here's where the, the ability to drill down comes very useful. So let me go and see what happened in October there. One click. So this data is coming from a data import from my ERP. With one more click, I'm now going down to the financial warehouse that has the full transactional detail, and I can see every posting line from the ERP from here. And if, if I have it mapped to my document management system, I can even with one more click go all the way down to invoice level. So in three or four clicks, I'm, I went from a very high level view down to the invoice level. And I'm analyzing the holding company by time, but I can also very easily switch that and say, well, I want to see the year not by time, but by business unit or department or division, or I want to analyze my entire group. So I've got the subsidiaries in different countries, including France and China, a column for eliminations, and my consolidated total. Entities can roll up to different consolidation hierarchies. For example, France is here as part of group, but I have a group in parallel called region or management, and in these groups, I've, I've, I've got the same data. So I'm now viewing by region, and Europe, so I've got there the same data from subsidiary France. That's coming from our dimension organization elements, which is very powerful. So in a, this basically the views I was just showing you in the dropdown, I can administer them from here. I've got here a management view, and let's say I've got a new reporting scheme that has a manager taking care of production only. 
I can create a column or a view for, for, for this person. So let's say I've got this uh, manager production, right? And then this person is in charge of the production profit centers, cost centers from the holding company, but he's also responsible for the French production line. So I've got it there. Let me jump back to my PNL, and I'm now able to have a third column for the new manager, where he can analyze his own costs and, and profits. So again, in a, in a couple of clicks, I was able to change my reporting structure now for management. You go back to my first view. Then this data is actuals, but of course I'm also able to switch to a budget scenario. And probably you're wondering if I can do this. So I can also, of course, have a, the analysis of the deviation between actual and budget with a personalized view. These views are very easy to create and manage as well. Let's say I want a new column showing the difference, but not in a percentage, but in, a, in an absolute figure. So I can very easily go to my views configuration and, right, actually, let me do this one, and say, well, on the act dash bot view, I want an absolute difference. between budget and actuals. So that's it, and I immediately have my new column. And this, these views are personalized, or I can share them with other users as well. And this, the dimension bar on top can be used for any view, management view, legal view, actuals, budget. So these views are available for any dimension or for other users as well. Now, in terms of loading data, in the example today, I've got data loaded until September 18. Now I need, I need to start working on the October closing. So I'm going to go ahead and extract data from the ERP for this holding entity. And for that, I can very easily go to my import section and say I want to create um, October load. That was the holding company, and I'm going to use this mapping table. That's October. So the data import has found two new accounts created in my ERP and one new cost center. So I can very easily map that to my group report. So it's these two new codes. First of all, I can check whether the code already exists in my data model with this button. So indeed, there's already a 3030 code, so I'm just going to link it to the existing code. And then I have this other account for fuel cost. That would be somewhere here, motor vehicle cost. And I do not have anything yet there for fuel, so I can, with one button, create the new subline there, and the mapping is saved as well. For the entity structure, there is a new cost center for production, so I, ca I need to add it as well. So I've had until now only three. Now, with one click, I create my fourth one. It will flow with the name in the ERP, but I can rename it on the fly. I'm just going to make sure it's above the total line. So that is constantly changing in the, in the local ledger, but we're looking at it, that's not a problem. You can map it yourself. You don't need to call a consultant. You don't need to code anything. Right, so 
can now go back to my data and my October column has data as well. And as I was telling you, the secondary PNL for a, a different gap perhaps is connected. So this one has uh, data in October as well. The second, year, the, the second PNL could be perhaps your management PNL or a different gap, and they're all interconnected. In terms of my balance sheet, you see there a change between September and October as well. And I can toggle this button to see movements per month instead of balances. And my cash flow statement is also automatically updated. So got here investment activities. Some transactions I loaded hit the cash flow. And I can see here that this is, this is not another report I have to maintain separately or post to separately. It just has um, references to the main balance sheet. So whenever I drill down, I see that it's data that flew from the balance sheet with a specific mapping. So it's a movement in an asset that was mapped to a, a different dimension, investments and decrease in, in, in depreciation. And the software know, knows which kind of movement hits the, the cash flow and which, can, which, which one doesn't hit the cash flow. So the total balance sheet movement from the ERP is uh, the 100 minus the 32, but the cash flow only, only reflects the 32, which was the actual cash in or cash out. I don't know if there's any questions so far. Otherwise, I'll, yes? I uh, worked on my PNL for uh, August, for example, and uh, now it's October. But uh, in the accounting system, in the ERP, the data is already different because they went to, uh, you know, to, to put the invoice for August mm -hmm. that came that they had in October. Okay. Okay, so I don't know if I'm clear enough. But yes, so the ERP was not closed yet and you already imp had imported it to, yes. to consolidation. Is yeah. it, um, is there any way that uh, it goes automatically or I have to tell the system every time go and uh, update the previous months? There is a way to set data imports like the one I just did to occur overnight automatically. Mm -hmm. uh, how, and many customers prefer that the month is is the, the previous months are locked in the, in for consolidation? Yes. And that this overnight import, they decide whether or not it will capture changes in previous months. Most of them will actually, in other markets, decide that to cap to take the change, the mm -hmm. correction done in the previous month, and write it on the on the latest month in Lucanet, so that the year to date okay. is correct. But they can still identify and be able to see what needs to be corrected in the ERP. Okay. So you, you have different options and different control points. So, but uh, yeah, it is possible to yes. go back and change. Okay. Yes, of course. Okay, so if, if it's okay, I'm going to move to consolidation. So I'm back to my group overview with different countries on the columns, and in, there are some intercompany transactions amongst them. So for example, the Chinese have 119K against the French, receivable, and then down at the payables, the French column has 120,000 against the Chinese, right? And in an ideal world, these intercompany details would come from my ledger. When I would import from the ledger, I would automatically get the intercompany map to the right partner. But in our projects, we realized that in many cases, it's not the case. The, leg the local ledger only gives you so much information and often, intercompany is not part of it, or movement details. So here's where this uh, optional module can be applied, where Lucanet will help you administer the data collection down at the subsidiary. So often our clients have a legacy Excel spreadsheet called a reporting package that they send out to the subsidiaries, and then the data collector of the subsidiary has to fill it in. There's a lot of errors, uh, it's, it's subject to all of these advantages of Excel. So we will, re we will replace that with a web-based 
data collection form. Where the data collector at the subsidiary sees an interface, for example, like this, but it doesn't have to look like this. It can look whatever you want it to look like. This is basically tailored to your needs. It's multi-language, so the user will see things in, in, in her own language. And then they're able to import from Excel or from an ERP to this pre-staging area. Well, the system will already tell them if there's an error or if there's something wrong with the data they're importing. So for example, if they import something that, that does not balance, already the system is telling them they, there are some rules you did not observe. So they can click and see, hey, assets does not equal equities and liabilities. So they are still able to save their submission can still save it and maybe come back work on it next day, but they're not able to submit. The system will stop them until they clean up their data. And let me just make this balance again. And you see the account on the left and on the right. That's because the left is the group structure that will get imported to look on it. And on the right is their, is their local ledger. So th these web forms are very loved by, by our customers. I, I would have loved to show you the rest of the exercise, but basically the, the party and the other subsidiary is also submitting the data, and they get another rule saying, hey, the company A submitted 20,000 receivable, you're only submitting 15,000 payable. Click here, and you can contact the other person, discuss the invoice, probably they forgot to send an invoice, and, and resubmit the data. So if I'm sitting in Sofia or at the central office, I'm in charge of consolidation. By the time the, the data gets to me, it's already almost reconciled or more clean uh, and without using Excel. Thank you. Thank you.